Just make sure you order an extra large pizza. Here's your look at the new NECA Toys Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Giant Size Turtles Raphael. After being accidentally exposed to radioactive ooze, four ordinary household pets are transformed into a band of wise-cracking, pizza-loving, villain-dicing adolescent reptiles. Meet Leonardo, the super-cool sword-wielding leader, Raphael, the jokester hurling manholes and one-liners in rapid succession, Donatello, the brain behind the brawn, and Michelangelo, the ice cream pizza gobbling party animal. Whether it's facing fierce enemies or saving humanity from near extinction with the guidance of their sensei, these heroes in a half-shell are always ready for straight-out-of-the-sewer action. Shredder doesn't stand a chance. Before we take a closer look at big-sized Raphael, the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall it actually stands. It's a pretty big boy, so I'm going to have to reach a little further up with my tape measure just to clear the top of his head. And while I am doing this, I'd like to thank the folks over at NECA Toys that provide the sample of the giant-sized turtle Raphael that we could have a look at in this review. It's going to be a big one. The figure stands 14.7 inches in height. You read that right, 14.7 inches in height. We can switch that over to centimeters, revealing that Raphael is almost 38. He's actually closer to 37 and a half, or 37.5 centimeters tall. Speaking of Shredder, here he is next to a regular Shredder figure. It's not really much of a threat anymore, is he? And for other comparisons, he'd probably be best fitted to bring in a, a Raphael, so you guys can see the difference between the two. In this case, Shredder goes to about mid-thigh on the big-sized Raphael. Raphael's a little shorter than that. He comes up to about the knee area on the larger-sized Raphael. But really, to put that in perspective, just sit back for a second. Just sit down and just take all in how much bigger the big-sized Raphael is when you really compare him against some of the other turtle figures that we've gotten before. There's a fair bit of territory to cover for the accessories that come include with this rather large sized RAF. We'll start first with this turtle communicator. The communicators granted have included with the smaller sized figures, but maybe not doing it this cool though. You can see right now it's in its compact state and it's finished on both sides with some rather nice paint applied on both sides. But it does also have, because they are working with a larger appliance, they can actually incorporate stuff that moves on it. So you take the shell and you just widen it out. You just pull it from both sides. And inside reveals the screen, as well as a couple of controlling buttons. Now, of course, they wouldn't be able to pull this off on a smaller communicator, but being it bigger, yeah, absolutely. They've incorporated some functioning moving parts. I think that's absolutely fun. I may have mentioned this also in a previous Turtle review. Speaking of role-playing, were we speaking of role-playing? Well, speaking of role-playing, just recently, they've started releasing Batman role-playing toys, or replicas. It's probably a better way to describe them. Why not release a replica of the cartoon communicator? It could still do all the things that we just looked at right now, something I could open and close, and maybe even have actually a screen with light-up buttons. I think they absolutely could do that. I'm pretty sure there'd be a lot of collectors that would be on board getting a full-sized cartoon replica of the Turtle communicator that they had in the series. When you fold it up, now it when you are extending it like this, it does get a little, not floppy, but the bottom end of it does shake a little bit. It still holds its shape and doesn't fold in on itself. And then when you're done, fold these probably in first and then just push it together. And then you can store it on the side of the turtle's shell. So for example, on the side of Raphael, just where his belt strap is, there's enough clearance. You can actually get your finger in there. But what I will be doing when it comes to displaying this is taking the turtle communicator that granted, of course, if I'm not displaying it in his hand, and you can very easily slide it down into the belt and a nice little storage place. There is still a lot of space where you can then take the side that we're going to be looking at in a second and still fit them in there. But I think that's just a perfect place, if you ask me, to store the turtle communicator when, of course, he's not holding it in his hands. A big-sized turtle has a big-sized appetite, so to come and clue with the figure, NECA throws in three slices of pizza. I know what you're thinking, that's only two. Well, technically, he does have a third, but these ones are close enough in shape and size that we would have a look at these first. Um, what's interesting and thing about them, you can see that they are unique to one another, 
This one looks like it's got a big slice of tomato. I'm assuming turtles don't tend to get tomato on their pizza. It's probably a big uh, piece of pepperoni instead. But there's also some mushrooms and a whole lot of extra cheese. But the neat thing about it, though, is if you aren't going to be displaying them in his hand, they seem to have interlocking pieces to it. See that there's a couple of slots on the one side and a couple of similar shapes on the other. You can just take the two pieces and connect them together like this. Now, I don't know if this means that when it comes to the other turtle brothers, that maybe we are going to be getting some additional slices that are going to interlock the exact same way. That's pretty clever the way that they've done that. So you could eventually finish off a full-size pizza because you imagine like the other three brothers would each have two slices. It also does lock the exact way or interlock on the opposite side as well. Just works the exact same way. Just connects like that. It's a very tight fit. It's perhaps possible as well that the big size turtles, one of them will come with a pizza box. I would imagine then you would be able to take all the slices and put them together like that. It's really clever the way they've done that. Of course, I did say he came in clue with three slices of pizza, and the third one being the ooeyest, gooeyest of them all. It still has, I'm just going to write this off and assume that these are all pepperonis. No turtle or any human being is going to get tomato on their pizza. I'm sorry, who puts tomato on pizza? But at least this one has a lot of, like I said, ooey gooey cheese. And it's draped over in such a way that, again, you can either have it held in his hands or you'll also see, peekaboo, I see you. There's a little hole right at the top there, right by, say, a neighboring anchovy, perhaps. But there's a hole that goes straight through it. Take one of the side that come included with Raphael and similar to his smaller sized counterpart, you can actually spear through the pizza slice with the side. And that's really super fun. Probably going to be displaying, I think. I mean, Raphael, I think, is one I would consider him doing this on display. So I think certainly when it comes to putting this guy out on a shelf, I'm probably going to have him displayed. But like I said, the size spearing through the pepperoni pizza like this. Let's go ahead and remove this. He does come with two, a pair of psi, not pluralizing size. It's a pair of psi. He comes with two of these, and they seem to be identical to one another. Making use of a gray plastic with now painted in handle in brown with some additional panel lining done in there as well. Very simple yet very effective looking side that you can either then put in his hands or you can then also take the figure and just locate it in the front here. We already had a look at his belt already, but there's enough clearance that you can take the sigh and fit them in on either side. A sigh on either side. Like that. He also comes in clear with a couple of swappable hands as well. Let's go ahead and just pull those back out and like i said he does come with a couple of swappable hands as well the first ones being job well done thumbs up he comes with a pair of hands that have of course the big thumbs he also comes included with the gripping hands that are currently in the sockets of the forearms these of course come in quite handy when it comes to him holding the sigh in hand and all you have to really do is just pry the fingers a bit away i've noticed actually that the plastic seems soft on the fingers just to the right point where it's very easy to open up the grip and fit those sigh conveniently into the palms also to come include with the figure while we're still on the topic of hands of course let's get those out of his hand right now he comes also included with these hands and these are good if you want to have the side angled sideways, as opposed to having them held like this. All you really have to do is just pry this finger away, just get the hand in there, and then pry, like I said, this finger up like that, and then slide the side in. Slide the side in. And you get something that looks like that. Some people would prefer, I'm sure, this hand as a good way to be displaying with the figure. And I, again, I appreciate the fact that they would have included three swappable hands, considering the amount of plastic that they've already used producing such a large turtle. And then when you consider all the other accessories that come include with him as well, the fact that he includes then three swappable hands on top of that is really well appreciated, at least on this guy's part. Don't mean to alarm you with a decapitated turtle, but certainly for the purpose of showing you guys both the swappable head sculpts, I had to actually take this one off. So you can see the difference between the two. The expressions are greatly different. This one has a big, very visible smile with a nice sculpted tongue on the inside. Well, this one still has the sculpted tongue. He definitely looks like he's a little bit more angrier. They took that then one step further because you can then swap the eye pieces. What? You can swap out the eyepieces, you heard correctly. The first thing you will want to do, though, is take off the, the knotted part of the bandana. Because whatever, I'm sure, whatever 
I, you're going to be using a pair of eyes. You're going to want to use the same bandana piece because you only get one of them. So all you have to do is just wiggle this off the back of the head like that. And you'll see there's a hole on the back of it. There, by the way, there is some articulation on the actual knot of the bandana. I like that, that they did that. But what you can do is then you can take this part right off here, the bandana. You'll see like there's a little indentation on the front of Raphael's nose. And that sort of helps to get you in there to root this off, root this out of the, the bottom of his mouth. So what I found was a good thing, a little good tool to use. If you ever have nail clippers, because you really don't want to use anything that's super sharp, because you're going to damage, of course, the plastic. But if you get yourself like nail clippers, this little top part, you know, of course, the part that you, you clip with, seems like it's just the proper tool to do it. If you get in there and you get it right, right there, and you just start rooting in there, just wiggle it back and forth. And one again, good thing about using something like this is it's not going to cause any damage to it. Just twist it on one side. And if it helps as well, you can twist it on the other side like that. And then once enough of it is out, maybe you have to get in there a couple of more times to do it. You'll see why we're spending a little bit more time fishing it out because there's rather large clips on the inside that sit on the inside of the mouth. So what you can do then, remember these eyes, they were a lot happier looking eyes. Well, we'll go ahead and do the exact same thing on the other mouth, the one that has the angry expression. Again, just take those. You can try to again, do it with your hands, but to be all honest, it's a lot easier just using something like this. Stay away from using a knife, anything that could potentially damage the mold. But when you remove one of them like that, take then the other face, remove it like that. And now you can have sort of a more pranking looking Raphael is the best way as, as I could describe it. And when you put it back into place, you're just going to give it a good snap like that. And right there, there's one expression now changed and we can do the exact same thing on the other side. Taking again before was this head sculpt, the, at least the eyes and snapping it. You will want to make sure, of course, the hole is lined up to the back of it like that and then just push it down. Sometimes it also helps if you put it in on an angle like this. And then, like I said, just push it down like that. I can't really think of an easier way that they could have gone about doing this. I mean, obviously you'd want to have them latched like this so that they stay in place and it also finishes off the seam line. I mean, you, you'd hard, be hard pressed to really even be able to see where you'd be able to remove it. But right there, it changes the expression dramatically. In fact, actually, this one kind of looks a little bit more like Michelangelo now, short of the fact, again, that the bandana is just a different color. And here again, we've got a cut more of a prankster looking Raphael, which is probably going to be the head sculpt that I'm going to decide to go with instead. And of course, the only thing missing from this then is taking the bandana and just fishing it back, just putting it back and fishing with the opposite, just feed that back into the hole. And of course, it helps while you're doing it just to twist it. But you really want to make sure that those holes are lined up. I don't know if you can actually see it. The inside, there's actually a secondary hole that has to then line up to the one on the outside. If you don't have them close enough or they're just off a line just a little bit, then the hole of the bandana, the peg of the bandana, won't properly fit in. Again, we'll just twist that in place. And then you've got a pretty nice looking Raphael. Probably my favorite of the four, I guess, four or so different configurations you can go with. Now that we've settled on the head sculpt that we want to go with, again, this is one of four different configurations because, right, you got two different mouths, two different eyes, and then you can swap it from there. I will say, though, to the credit of a larger scale figure, because it's not something I normally collect, I really think the head sculpt is superior on this versus the smaller scale Raphael. It probably is a best, best segue then to bring in the tiny little Raphael comparing the two. And I know it's not 100% fair for me to make the comparisons because the head sculpts are different. Uh, clearly, the expressions are very different from one to the other. But I think that the paint is a lot nicer and applied a lot cleaner on the larger scale turtle. One thing also that the larger raft has, that simply the smaller raft just doesn't, is the little bit of reflection of light. See the little dots of white on the pupils? Smaller raft didn't have that, but the larger one does. And I think it does add a little bit more personality to the head sculpt. Of course, when you look at the rest of the figures, very small sized raft compared to the bigger sized raft, really not much does change. The paint is pretty much the same. 
Although, because again, you, you're dealing with basically a larger canvas, it gives him really an opportunity to pre present a much cleaner looking paint job. Things like his R, for example, is a much sharper paint, whereas maybe the smaller RAF had a little bit more imperfections around the area of the R. Of course, now you can also see the R stands out a lot more. It does have that panel lining, which to be again fair, when you bring in the original RAF, the original RAF had that as well. Though I think just again on a larger scale figure like this, it just looks a lot nicer and a lot cleaner. Similar to the original Turtles as well, we can spin this one around so you can see it from the back side here. He has, similar to the original ones, the dark shadowing. It basically takes the existing color, so like for example this color right here, and it just drops a shade down a few. It's not really quite the same green, but it's certainly close enough that it gives you some nice shadowing. And that also carries on to the, the bandana as well, which is again something that the original Turtles also possessed as well. You've got the two-tone effect also coming into play on the front of the shell. As you can see, there's a little band of almost a beige color that comes down onto the side. And also, if you spin it around, something that we haven't yet really done in this review, and see the big sized shell here. Short of a few little places of paint that have found their way, unfortunately, onto the shell, the shell looks very clean. And I don't see really any imperfections. There are a few little sections where it seems like there's additional paint that sort of has been unfortunately applied on top of it but on that like the shell looks really clean and of course it does add a whole lot of extra weight to it i don't really think there's a lot of weight here but there's a lot of more denser plastic definitely on the shell knock knock who's there as we certainly spin around the figure you can see the elbow pads the elbow pads are kind of actually interesting i mean really the, the wristbands are there as well but they're more of a solid plastic but when it comes to the elbow pads what they've done here is they've made these a softer plastic that goes over top of the joint. You'll see much more of it when we talk about the articulation on the figure, but it, it basically sits on top of that joint and you can literally just move the elbow pad back and forth. Like I said, being a softer plastic like this. Get a little bit low, low further down on the figure, you got some nice panel lining making up the thigh area. Again, you've got the knee pads done in that softer plastic, similar to the elbow pads. And as we get down to a, now a lot, much larger pair of turtle feet, funny enough, they actually did put peg holes on the undersides. I don't know if I would really need to bring in display stands for this type of transaction. I don't feel like the turtle necessarily needs something to make him more stable. I mean, funny enough, I mean, you would think that a figure this size would have some difficulty standing. And quite quite really the opposite. It probably helps as well that he's got the shape feet that he does. He doesn't have to deal with smaller shoes that a regular, say, one quarter scale figure could have had. Because his feet are almost sort of fanned out like this, it gives him a little bit more stability. It also helps the fact that this particular turtle, all the big size turtles, are gonna have ankle pivots. So you can sort of compensate, because in a case like this, more of the weight of the turtle is further up than it is further down. Let's go ahead now and check out the articulation on big sized RAF. So his head rotates back and forth. It is on that ball joint after all. Because of that, it can hinge up, it can hinge down, and you can rock it back and forth. But he does also have a secondary ball joint at the base of the neck. That means then he has some additional articulation where you can move the head beyond the point of what would normally have been the case if just, like I said, he had the one ball peg going there. You can also, when it comes to his arms, bring his arms out. I wouldn't necessarily say at a very comfortable 90 degree angle. I mean, the arms are a bit on the stiff side. I've noticed actually when I am moving the arms, that they almost seem to have like a ratcheted joint working for them. Again, I can't quite pull off a full 90 degrees, but it's just, just a hair, just a turtle hair. Does turtles have hair? It's just a hair off from that. You can bring the arms all the way around, of course. And I like this. I like that the elbow pad is a separate piece, that it stays out of the way. So when it comes to, for example, let's just move this, speaking of moving it out of the way, he does actually have two hinges. There's a hinge joint right there, and there's a hinge joint right there. That ends up giving you a double hinge on the ball joint, a double hinge joint. The one thing that you will notice, though, as you're moving the arm too aggressively, even though I didn't feel like I moved it too aggressively, that the elbow pad attaches by ball socket. It's interesting the way that they've done this, though sometimes when you are moving the arm inadvertently, what ends up happening is that that elbow pad then frees itself from the ball joint. So you may have to then just go in there and fix it up afterwards. Uh, the hands do rotate all the way around, whatever hands, of course, you decide to display him with. And they also hinge back and forth. 
He does also have an upper torso ball joint, which is sometimes hard to access when it comes to these turtles, simply just because they're heroes in a half shell. Shell in the front, shell in the back, and then you've sort of got the articulation sandwiched in the middle. But he does have a ball joint, so essentially you can rotate at least the top half of it back and forth. You're really not going to get a whole lot of leeway being able to do that, simply just because he's self-contained. Shell in the back, shell in the front. Then for his legs, his legs split out, and very much you can hear a ratcheted joint working behind the scenes. It means that the joints on the legs not only are going to be loud to the neighbors, but it also means that the legs are going to stay stable and strong, not get loose over time. He does have a double hinge on the knee. Um, he doesn't have any articulation that I've seen on the lower leg of things where you'd be able to rotate the leg back and forth. I, there's just a little bit, but I think actually the joint is further up here. The joint's right there where you can swivel it back and forth. Same thing applies, same rules apply as the elbow pads. See, there's a knee ball joint right there, and that just tabs into. I guess they did that so that you could plug these in place, and then you wouldn't have to worry about the, the knee pads and the elbow pads just shifting around on you. But like I said, he has double hinge joints on the back there. Uh, for his feet, they move back and forth this way. You can also hinge them up and down this way. And the only thing that this one doesn't possess, not that I really feel it needs it, is he doesn't have toe articulation. He has foot articulation and he has ankle articulation, but he doesn't have any posability in the toes. And again, I don't feel necessarily that Raphael needs to have it either. At the end of the day, you've got yourself quite the large looking raft that you can put on display and Yes, in fact, if you do want to make the rest of your collection feel inferior, you can bring in one of these smaller scale rafts and put them on display next to it. Of course, one thing that benefits this line is not only do you get oversized figures, but I feel like improvements have been made versus the original ones that we looked at before. Going also bigger allowed them the opportunity to incorporate some fresh new ideas like swapping out eyes and mouths. So you can have four different configurations, four different configurations that you can put your big sized raft in when it comes to displaying him on your shelf. When it comes to NECA's new release of their TMNT giant sized Raphael, I feel like the accessories as well as the new ideas brought to the table only benefit by the fact that the figure is already 15 inches tall. What I mean by that is like the turtle communicator. One of the things I really liked about the included accessories the fact that it does open and close and have hingeable antennas is nice, but I don't think it's something that could be pulled off successfully with the smaller scale turtles. Because of course you're taking the idea and you're having to shrink it down and still make it manageable, I don't think you'd be able to do that. Certainly when it comes to the, my favorite thing about this figure, having the swappable head tops and bottoms giving you four different configurations is really neat. The idea though, would they be able to do that on a smaller scale format? And that I don't really know. It would involve, of course, having to peg the top of the head to the bottom of the mouth. Maybe this is just something, their waters that they're testing right now, to see if it's something that they could do on a smaller scale format. If it is just the case where this is something that they only can do on a 15-inch tall turtle, I like the idea that it wasn't just a larger scale Raphael that we got here, that it wasn't just the side, and it wasn't just pizza slices that we've seen before with other releases, but know in fact that NECA Toys brought something new to the table, and that's all the more reason why you want to get excited for a line. It's not only the size that they released them as, but it's the things that can come along with it, some bright, fresh new ideas. A big thank you to the folks over at NECA Toys that provide the sample of the giant-sized Raphael. He's 15 inches tall, can you believe that, that we had a look at in this review. Let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of the giant-sized Raphael, and if you've managed to pick this one up for yourself. Also, if you're new to this channel and enjoying all the content you're seeing, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below and turn the bell notification on. And that keep your peepers peeled to this channel, because not only are we going to be looking at some more turtle releases, but we are also going to be looking at some more NECA releases as well. And as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.